Hi there, this is Mike Larson, Editor-in-Chief with The Money Show, and I'm coming to you from the Orlando Money Show 2022. I'm pleased here to have Tony Hansen, Principal and CEO of TonyHansen.com. Tony's been educating investors and traders for more than 20 years to help them become uh, better students of the market and better able to navigate tricky markets like this one. So, Tony, welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay, Thank so you. why don't we you know, start from sort of the top level. You know, you, your presentation was called Building a Trading Strategy, Timing is Everything. Uh, what is it that you talked about? What is you know, the main message you're trying to give when you, when you sit down and have these workshops? Right, right. Well, I mean, one of the problems that a lot of traders have is just lack of confidence on their trades. You know, they're often too early or they wait and they wait for confirmation and then they're too late and they completely miss it. Yep. So that particular class that I taught today focused upon those key time development levels where you have the highest probability of a setup triggering and then continuing where you're okay. not just going to be sitting around in the chop for very long. Yeah. And you know there's some of those are really simple things to do. So if you look at previous zones of congestion in a security, for example, something that has been in a downtrend for a while, it will have pauses that we call you know, bear flags. Okay. And those are things where you want to look for the ones that have the same amount of time on them. So when you're doing things like wave counting your trends, if you have one pause that is lasting for 30 minutes and then you're coming down again, you got another pause for 30 minutes. Once you get to that 30 minute marker point, you have a higher probability that something's going to happen there. Okay. And if it doesn't happen at that exact point, you might be dealing with something where it's a two wave trend and then goes into a longer correction. So you can take that 30 minute time frame and double it. And then that is your next do or die point to try to get okay. it. But if you're looking for something that's in between there, you're much more likely to get a trap and I'll give you a fake setup. Sometimes they'll even flush you up and then flush you right down. <laughs> so the whole range ends up really wide where it's knocked everybody out. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, if it was easy, uh, everybody would be doing it, right? That, right. And that's the whole point of education. Um, let me ask you this. When it comes to time frames, I mean, are you training uh, traders for short term, intermediate term, long term, any term? Is there, you know, how does it work for you? Right. Well, I started as a swing trader back okay. in the mid 1990s. And it was something where every night I would be doing scanning and doing my research and looking over hundreds of charts. Mm -hmm. And with time and time constraints, I just found I was focusing more upon what was going on in the futures market. Okay. And I went from trading just you know a couple of strategies to my, my repertoire of strategies I trade went up. So then I began to focus more upon the futures markets where I could come in at three in the morning mm -hmm. if I'm overseas and trade that market and it wouldn't matter as much. And it's really just about trading around what your schedule is. Okay. So if you're focusing on learning a technical based system, then it doesn't matter where your life leads you, whether you have kids or you're single and you're working crazy hours, sure. you can always adjust because the system's going to stay the same. And I assume the same applies. So it's not just time frames; it applies to almost any market, right? I mean, you're yeah. teaching. Yeah, I mean, you're going to see the, the, the same sort oh, yeah. of methodology. I mean, one of the one of the things that is different is if I'm trading during the trading day, I'm relying more on tick charts okay. for things like the time development. So if you're using like your zone of congestion, it might be 30 minutes on a time frame chart, but it might be. 30 bars on a tick chart. Okay. And so during the day, I'm going to be using more of the, the, the number of bars. And then overnight, when I'm trading more of the futures markets and overseas markets, I'm going to be relying more on the time frame charts. Okay, perfect. Now, I, I read about this, or I saw this this uh, term, and I had to ask about it because I think a lot of people want it. You mentioned the zone of pain. Yeah. Uh, what is the zone of pain, and how can a trader avoid it? I have to ask. Well, it's one of those levels where you're dealing with trend exhaustion, okay. but momentum hasn't shifted or created strategies that are on the larger time frame to allow for a true trend reversal. Okay. So you end up in a market that has a lot of back and forth, and it's basically just a waiting zone for traders. And the problem a lot of traders run into is they go way down to those smaller time frames, but they don't get into um, actually seeing setups that correspond to bigger time frames. Okay. 
so they can get trapped the wrong direction when the market takes off. Got it, okay. Now, one thing I know that you had said, successful traders have discipline, obviously that's very important. And you mentioned what the psychologist Carol Dweck said, a growth mindset. Um, talk a little bit more about those two things. You know, How is it that you teach the people that are coming to your seminars about that, and what does that mean? Well, I mean, I come from a background of educators. My mom was a teacher, okay. and my dad worked for the university. Okay. And so I came in and traded trading the same way I would learning any other subject. Okay. I viewed it from like a scientific mindset. Hey, let's try this. Let's take a note of what's happening. Does it work? Does it not work? How often does it work? Yeah. And is it proving itself over time? And for traders, what that means is really journaling every trade you take. And I can tell you there's only a fraction of a percent of traders yeah. that actually do that. And so you can still learn, but it's gonna take you a lot longer and you're gonna have a lot of false ideas in your mind that you really can't go back and look at the data and say, well, that didn't really happen yeah. in that way. So when you're looking at a growth mindset, you are, you're always asking a question. So if you're trading something like a head and shoulders pattern, then one of the things with the time development that I talked about is, I mean, if you go to like any of the top searches in Google for head and shoulders pattern, if you apply the strategy like they teach in yep. those, you're going to crash and burn hard because it's going to give you so many fake yeah. setups. So one of the things with that is make sure you're it, your shoulder and your head and your right shoulder are evenly spaced. And that's one of those things. And then how far after that even spacing does the setup still mm -hmm. remain valid? And so with the head and shoulders pattern, you have a little bit of room on the other side up to like um, 123.6 as far as like wiggle room. Okay. But if it's not confirming past that setup, you need to get very aggressive with your management because there's a better chance that yeah. it's going to end up failing on you. Got it. You know, that's a great point. And I, and I think I'm going to wrap up with one thing. You know, everybody's looking on fundamental analysis. What's that, that, that magic uh, indicator for the markets and economic, whatever, all that stuff. But from a trading standpoint, what's, if you had to say an underutilized trading tool, something that you find very valuable that people tend to overlook, what would that be? Well, when I first came into trading, I didn't use a lot of indicators. I knew like moving averages and that was pretty much it. And I would play around with things like MACD and stochastics every once in a while, but I couldn't find something where it was working consistently. Mm -hmm. And I, with my background in the arts, I was familiar with Fibonacci okay. and just the, the, the relationships within Fibonacci and thinking of it in terms of how humans are very repetitive creatures and mm -hmm. all trading is, is just mapping human yep. behavior. And so one of the tools that I started using really within the last 10 years is a Fibonacci fan. Okay. And a lot of traders try it and find that they, it doesn't work for them. And that's because with the fan, there's a number of variables where you have to adjust the fan depending mm -hmm. upon what is happening. So you have your very basic fan where you would go from like a high point to a low point in an impulse move. Yep. And you'd be looking for the fan levels coming out. But if your impulse move is straight up, your fan level's not going to give yep. you great levels. You want something that's pretty average momentum. And then what you want to see happening is, let's say you're looking for like a bear flag. So on in a, a typical bear flag, you might have a two wave correction. Mm -hmm. So your first wave up, you would want that to hook up with the 50% or the 61.8% fib fan. Okay. So if that hooks up, your 76.4% is your go. And that's where you're going to be looking for your major trigger points. Got it. And so if you have that lining up with other things like the congestion time development mm -hmm. or um, it could be another type of support or resistance that's happening in the market. If you are using things like MACD, you know, maybe that's giving you a trigger there as well. Yeah. But oftentimes that will just blow right off of that fib fan. And it's really amazing because it hits within just like a couple of ticks. That's a great, you know, a great insight. Some traders may not even have heard of it, much no, less used no, it. No, a lot and of that's platforms nice. don't even offer yeah. it. That's great, Tony. Really, you know, we don't have as much time as I, I guess I wish we did, but that's why people are here to take your full-length classes. Right. Thank you so much for doing well, this and sharing a little bit me. of your insights.
And thank you everyone for watching. This is Mike Larson with The Money Show.